My name is Eric Altair. I am a teacher and mentor with Eve University, uh, currently in hiatus uh, for due to several life events, but I'm just getting back into the game after about three months of playing Eve skill training complete. Um, very interesting way to play Eve, but I think everybody does it every once in a while. Um, and one of the things that's brought me kind of back into Eve is reading about and playing with some of the changes that are anticipated for in the Rubicon expansion. Now, two weeks from tomorrow, Rubicon will become live, and there will be quite a number of changes to the game. I believe it's Eve, or CCP's 20th expansion. And while it doesn't contain any major, quote-unquote, Jesus features, or large game-changing um, additions, it, it, it will change up the, the landscape of New Eden uh, due to the various small changes that are going to occur. Everything from high security to PvP is going to change. Uh, even things like missioning and, and mining are going to change significantly because of some of these small changes. So the goal of the class today is to get you introduced and familiar with the Singularity test server, how to set it up, how to get on, what it can provide for you and offer, why you might want to get on, um, the differences between the Tranquility server and the Singularity server, and then hopefully that'll prepare you if, for if you're interested later on today. Uh, CCP is hosting a mass test on Singularity, and for um, testing with them, they'll provide everybody on Singularity, or ex yeah, Singularity, two million Singularity skill points. So if you've always wanted to try out a certain skill, but you just don't have time to train it uh, on your main character here in Tranquility, you can hop on over for that test, get awarded those skill points, drop them on a skill that you're interested in trying out, or a ship, or so on and so forth. So, um, just a little bit about my character. Uh, I've been playing uh, on and off since around 2005. Didn't really start up seriously until about a, uh, just over a year ago, and have uh, played since. I started in uh, Eve University, uh, spent some time in Agony Unleashed before coming back to Eve University to become a teacher. Um, the class questions will be, if you have questions, please feel free to use lecture.e-uni. Um, I will try to keep an eye on that and answer them as appropriate. If there are connection problems or sound issues, uh, please let me know as soon as possible. And so if somebody types in, hey, I'm having connection issues, if uh, other people could kind of chime in as to the status of their connection as well, uh, that can help me identify if it's a problem on my end or just uh, maybe it, it's a Twitch thing or maybe it's the connection on the other end. If uh, people come into the lecture channel and don't have the link, if uh, somebody could kind of take ownership of posting it up, so that way uh, I can focus a little bit on the class. I'd like it to be about an hour or maybe a little bit less um, as it is very early in the morning where I am in the Rocky Mountains of the United States. Uh, I play before work, so I do kind of have a, a deadline at the end. But um, so without further ado, we're going to be taking a look at uh, some of the new sh ships. Here's some uh, concept work that you can find on the forums. For the frigate as well. Here's some for the cruiser. So let's get into Singularity, what it is and how to get on it. Um, so Singularity, or Sissy, as, uh, is CCP's public test server for EVE, basically means that Sissy is a parallel universe to Tranquility. Um, every system, every station, every agent, um, pretty much everything in the game uh, exists that exists in the, on the main server Tranquility um, also exists on the test server. And CCP will regularly 
do a database dump or copy all of the character information from Tranquility over to Sissy. So if you've had, if you have an active um, account sub and an active subscription for EVE Online and your character is um, newer than probably two weeks to four weeks, you can probably get on Sissy with that character. The uh, CCP uses Singularity as their sort of final polish test. Um, it's public facing most of the time, which means most of the time players can get on it whenever they want. And uh, it often will contain the latest changes to the game before they go live on Tranquility. So CCP does this to test those additions, find and identify any bugs, and, and implement fixes before they roll them out to our main server. And uh, it's a really smart way to do design and production. Um, so why, why would you want to play on Singularity? Well, there's, there's only a few people that would play Singularity all the time. Most people are only going to want to come for special purposes or events. Uh, events like the mass test tonight at uh, 1700 eve time. The other reason is uh, to test things out. So for the most part your character is going to be there probably missing a few skills that you've trained recently. But that means that if you want to try out a new tactic, if you want to try out a new ship, if you're unfamiliar with a certain type of playstyle, or you want to go see something that you might not otherwise be able to see, Singularity is a great place to do that. It's not very populated. I think there's about 200 people on at the moment. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, the first reason you might want to hop on Singularity is to help CCP out. Uh, in the software lifecycle, they need people to test their product before they roll live. And when you hop on Singularity, that's essentially what you're doing. You're a, a beta tester. Um, they can monitor feedback um, on uh, and metrics on their side, but also if you identify bugs and changes, there's a forum where you can go and um, put your feedback, identify any bugs or any problems that you've encountered, and then CCP takes those very seriously and they implement uh, changes based on that feedback. So for example, these, um, these new ships that you've seen, the Sisters of Eve exploration slash combat frigate, and the cruiser here have gone through several iterations of their um, internals. So uh, the cruiser, for example, when they first announced it was an awesome, amazing platform. And many people were saying, I'm never going to need any other ship ever again. You could field a full flight of sentries. You could cloak. You could sino. You could use a covert sino. Um, you had an amazing slot layout. It was It was just an awesome ship. And many people after getting on Singularity and testing it out, uh, fighting in it, doing things in it, gave some feedback to CCP saying, hey, this is a little overpowered. You might want to introduce some changes. And so they've done that. Um, so that's, that's one of the reasons you can get on the Singularity test server. Um, the other reason is uh, you might want to test things yourself. So it's, it's a, for example, the you, I, I just trained up the interceptor skill, and I've never flown interceptors before. I've done a lot of tackling in a lot of different ships, but never flown interceptors. So um, hopping on Singularity gives me a chance to get in an uh, interceptor and fly it around and, and uh, find somebody to kind of test those uh, skills and that ship against without really worrying about get losing it or uh, diplomatic repercussions for being in EVE and so on. Um, now, due to the low number of players, and this is a very unique feature of, of Sissy or Singularity, is it doesn't have a working economy. So CCP seeds almost every item for 100 ISK. You can fly Navy battleships and with Dead Space mods, and it's only a, a couple thousand ISK on Sissy. Um, so that's another big thing, is that it's very easy to hop in, buy something you might not otherwise buy, go and, and test it out or risk it in a way that you might not otherwise risk it on Tranquility because it costs you so much. Um, 
As I mentioned before, if you participate in the mass tests, CCP awards your sissy character 2 million skill points. Um, note that that doesn't transfer back to uh, your Tranquility account. That's just on your sissy character. Um, so I'm seeing a couple questions. Uh, no, you haven't missed the Rubicon preview. Um, we'll be doing that shortly after um, the Singularity introduction. And... Uh, Yodrit Heirloom asks how many additional ships in Rubicon? Um, two. We're seeing two, and those are the ones that I, I showed you the concept work for. So, the Sisters of Eve frigate here, and the cruiser. Now, there are changes to other ships, but to my knowledge, these are the only new ships being introduced in the Rubicon patch. So now that you've got a introduction to what Singularity is, um, do you have any questions about what Singularity is, what benefit it may be to you, and, and so on? We'll get into how to install and get access to it in just a second. Um, I see a question here. Is there any other way to earn skill points faster in Singularity? Asiantis, no. Uh, other than the um, awarded skill points for participating in a mass, um, your character on Sissy will almost always have less skill points than your character on Tranquility due to the fact that the database is not up copied very frequently, every, every two to four weeks. So you'll be missing some skills. You, may, you might find your character in a place you were two or three weeks ago. And um, you can start up um, a parallel skill training queue. However, when they do a new database dump, um, those changes are overwritten. And I believe that they also overwrite that 2 million skill point bonus that you get. So that's temporary, uh, that two extra 2 million skill points. And it's to your benefit if you get them to find something you want to use them on. Because in probably two to four weeks, when they copy this, the your character over from Tranquility again, you're, it's going to be overwritten. Yeah, it does make things a little bit harder. It's not an unlimited, you can go in and get as many skill points. And it would, In many ways, I think that would be a nice feature. Um, but if you want to test up above what your current skill points are, participate in CCP's mass tests on Singularity. It'll give you at least 2 million to play with. Um, which should be able to, to let you at least demonstrate and see what your kind of next step should be on Tranquility. Um, Kazarek asks, can I log into Singularity and Tranquility at the same time? And yes, and we're going to get into that right, right here. So, um, in order to access Singularity, you will need a separate installation of EVE Online. They're incompatible due to the way that it handles the patching and so on. So the easiest way to do that, and I'm going to um, kind of show you or how to do that here. So um, this is a look at my computer's uh, games drive. This is where I keep all my high performance programs. It's a, a solid state drive. But so you'll notice here, ooh, if I can kind of draw, I can't. So this is my um, normal Eve installation. I've named it to after my main character so I can keep easy access to it. Let me see if I can get that a little bit better. No. Fail. Can't draw with a mouse. Um, but what you'll need to do is you're going to take this right here and you're going to copy it. You can copy it to the same drive, different drive. It really doesn't matter. Um, in this case, I have this one. So I, as I copied it, it was Eve Eric dash copy, and I changed that to Eve Singularity. The next thing I did is I went in. You know what? Let me go back to the other one. So there's all these patch files and download files here um, in your main installation. So right in here. Anything that has a dot .patch or a dot .download, you'll need to delete. Now, you don't want to delete them in your main. Um, whoops. You don't want to delete them in your main installation um, after you've made that copy, 
that's where you'll want to delete them. So you copy it over, you then go into your new and you delete them. Um, those files are the files necessary for the updates and the changes that occur to Tranquility, but um, you need to delete them in order to get access to Singularity. So you notice there aren't any patch or download files. So from here, what I'll do is you'll come in right here, I'll draw right there, to the Eve uh, launcher icon. You'll right click and you'll send to desktop or just create a, a shortcut right here in the folder. And once you have that shortcut, you're going to go down to properties. Once you are here in the properties, the thing you do to get access is you do a, a space right here in the target and you'll do forward slash server semi or colon and then you'll write in singular singularity and that's it. I mean this is what's going to tell the game to contact the singularity server instead of tranquility um, is forward forward slash yeah, to the right forward slash um, server colon singularity once you have this you can hit OK and then you can take this drag and drop to your desktop or wherever you want to launch it from and this is the new um, this is the new icon you're going to use to get access to the game now once once you lo load this up it'll bring up the patcher just like normal and it'll probably have about a 1.2 gigabyte download to download all of the files necessary um, to play on Singularity. So you'll, it'll take some time to copy. Um, as you can see, uh, the installation right now is uh, just shy of 19 gigabytes. And uh, it's a lot smaller on the Singularity side, 13.2 gigabytes. But about 1.2 gigabytes of that is um, patch information sp very specific to um, the test server. So let me switch um, back over here for a second and uh, check, see if there's any comments. So Agentis asked, will this mess up any of my config files for Tranquility? And the answer is no. They are a separate clients. I, be I believe they keep um, separate um, like config files. I'll go check that real quick. And let's see here. Right, okay. So let me switch back over here. Okay. That didn't seem to work. Okay, so, um, that's not going to work. So anyway, this is um, your app data folder. It's usually stored under your user um, information in a, a hidden directory. So uh, each one of these right here represents a set of config files for a particular character in a particular installation. So you notice this is um, my main character, Eric, on Tranquility. Now, when you create a singularity, it, it identifies the, the new installation and it'll store a config file for that particular installation, so for singularity. So you're gonna, you can you know, copy the contents of you know, your main over into this singularity file. Um, let me make that so um, you can you don't have to go in and manually do them, um, but it won't they don't they don't talk to each other, so they're completely separate. So sorry about the tiny window, fixed it up a little. So um, in a nutshell, that is 
Singularity, how to get access to it, why you might want to get access to it, what you can do on it, and so on and so forth, the benefits of doing so. Just remember, everything you do on Singularity stays in Singularity. It's kind of like Vegas in that sense, sort of. Um, now, if there are no other questions, let's move on to what you're going to see, some of the features you'll see in um, Rubicon Expansion coming out November 19th, just over two weeks. Now, before I switch back, let me show you just a brief list. Um, I, I believe these are all the changes. And of course, it's going to do this to me again. Okay. Let me add. Uh, sorry, I talk about my uh, talking to myself. It's kind of a habit. Okay. Seems like I'm going to have to do this every time. So here's a quick list of the things that you can expect to see in Rubicon. The new Sisters of Eve pirate faction cruiser and frigate. Player-owned customs offices in high security space. A new class of deployable structures that can fit in your cargo hold and can be um, deployed to space. Right now, um, these include a mobile refit structure that will allow you in space to modify your ship layout, add modules, remove modules. I haven't seen any word as to whether um, it will allow you to refit Tech 3 cruiser subsystems, but a lot of people are pushing for that, um, and that would really be a boost to CCP's stated intent for the Tech 3 cruisers being very modular and being very um, customizable for the situation. Um, it, it's still, I don't think, even if they make that change and implement that for this mobile refit structure, it wouldn't change the problem with uh, your rigs being, you know, set once you put them in, but it's a step in the right direction. So, a uh, great little thing, you put it, they've talked about it being like 20 meters cubed, um, probably costing somewhere in the region of 10 to 20 million the for these structures, uh, but they haven't finalized any of that. And you'd basically fly, you'd, you could uh, go to a safe spot, plop it down, do your refitting, um, go off and do something else, come back if you want. M my guess is that these will be scannable, so somebody with probably combat scanner probes will be able to uh, scan these down and find your safe spot. So there is a, a cost to using them. But uh, they are currently not, and none of these deployable structures here are live on the Singularity server, so it's not something I can test or even show you. But there are some concept art um, floating around out there. The other one is a, a moon goose siphon, or a, a way to steal from passes. All the literature that I've read thus far indicates that it really only targets two particular modules associated with processing, uh, extracting and processing um, moon products. So probably not too applicable to your main character in e um, if you're in EVE University because moons typically are associated with alliances and that would probably be bad. But the concept here is that they're, once they're deployed, they stay deployed. They, you can't be, um, recall them and there's no access controls on them. So anybody can fly by and shoot them. They can loot them if they see that there's um, stuff in them. Uh, these structures here won't be sh automatically targeted by POS guns, so if you're leaving your POS without you know, player, much player interaction, uh, it won't automatically destroy these. You'll have to have somebody hop in one of the guns and shoot them. And um, no word yet as to whether it will send notices to the um, POS owner as to the, the, the fact that it's being stolen or things are being siphoned away. Uh, the other one that uh, people are really you excited about... telling me about red oh. folk, by the way, Dave. It looks like my mumble went off. Here we go. Sorry about that. This is the Sino Jammer. It's a portable, deployable structure that will uh, prevent any new Sinos from being lit within 70 to 120 kilometers of where it's deployed. It won't affect any Sinos that are currently up or have already been deployed, but it will prevent new Sinos from going up in that vicinity. So a great change, um, a sort of rolling static defense, 
these structures can be shot, they can be destroyed. I'm not sure if they can be picked up, or if they're kind of like a one-time use, like the Poss Moon uh, Goo Siphon, but um, another great thing here. So that's the deployable structures that I'm aware of. There might be others, but these are the ones that they've specifically talked about. Um, now, there are going to be some... Another huge one, absolutely huge, is the warp speed and warp acceleration changes that are going to occur. They're overhauling this, the way the certificate system works in conjunction with the new ship browser. Um, they're also implementing a compare tool. Now, there is a compare tool currently, but they're adding it to the Neocom as a kind of like a separate window you can open up. So um, it makes it easier to, to compare things as you don't have to go through that um, mess of windows to get access to it. They're changing some of the command ship modules and um, many tiers and much moaning about that. The Slepner is going to look like the Hurricane now. And uh, so they're just uh, currently the command ships both share the same model. So they're taking half of them and giving them different models. They're going to start supporting DirectX 11. However, it's not going to change the display much. They, they're enabling the support, but they haven't added any additional assets to support DirectX 11, so things won't look any different. But um, it'll be an option to in your launcher. You'll be able to click it, and it will use DirectX 11. You can unclick it. It'll revert back to DirectX 9. I don't believe they're supporting it on the Mac currently. Uh, it'll, Mac will continue to use only DirectX 9, but this will be an option. If, if your graphics card doesn't support DirectX 11, it won't even display. Now they're also introducing rapid heavy missile launchers. These are a similar to rapid light missile launchers in that they are a battleship weapon designed to shoot cruiser size um, missiles. So battleships that um, have a weapon system specifically to target battle cruisers and cruisers. Uh, sounds like battleships are getting a little bit of love in that regard. They're introducing ghost sites and ascendancy implants, or ascend, uh, I don't know how to say that. Ghost sites will occur e everywhere in space, including wormholes. They will drop unique components and unique blueprints for these ascendancy implants. The implants themselves increase warp speed. And the uh, most rare, the components themselves will drop based on where this ghost site is located. So the most rare of the components will only occur in ghost sites and wormholes. And they've described ghost sites as a sort of high speed, fast paced hacking slash combat. No other details that I've been able to determine. Another cool one, if you love the E-War, is electronic attack ship balances. They're getting a lot of love. They're, they're basically turning them into frigate-sized versions of the uh, Combat Recon class. Some awesome, awesome changes there. Um, these ships should now start seeing them, and they should have some really, really cool impacts on uh, small gang and uh, small ship combat. Their ranges are being increased. Their specific roles are kind of like mini, so uh, mini versions of the Combat Recon, so great, great changes there. Another big one, if you live in wormhole space or a nullsec space, is the interceptor warp bubble immunity. So interceptors are being given immunity to non-targeted interdiction. So warp bubbles, both anchorable and from interdictors. And um, they'll be able to warp right through them without any problem. They're also being balanced to bring them up in line with uh, the stiletto, which is, and the, the, they call it the Tyrannus. So the, the Stiletto and the Tyrannus have kind of been like the model uh, versions of the, both the fleet and combat interceptors, and everything's kind of getting balanced. A lot of people are saying that the Malediction is going to be the new, um, the new Ares, I, th I think, and the Crow is going to be the new Stiletto, but we'll see how it plays out. They're still tweaking those. Uh, another one I forgot to put in here is... Another one, if you live in wormholes or in nullsec, is the interdictor balancing. So right now the saber is pretty much the model. Uh, it's the only one you typically see, and so they're trying to balance all of the interdictors to kind of match the saber's performance while still maintaining its own flavor. Um, they're changing the new player training sessions 
or introducing them. And I believe these are just, uh, you, we've, you see them on the calendar, like CCP training or whatnot. Um, it's kind of to build upon the changes they've made to the tutorial series. They're also um, balancing, rebalancing the Marauders. Now, I don't fly Marauders. I don't fly big ships, so I'm not too familiar with these changes, but I did, did want to um, indicate them. And also, uh, in Rubicon, ship maintenance arrays, which is a player-owned starbase or POS structure, will generate kill mails and uh, will drop loot now. So just a quick overview of the things you'll see here. Oops. Let me make some changes to my screen here, and we'll get right into what you can expect to see. Uh, you know what? Let me check the questions real quick before we transition. Oh, yes. Thank you, uh, Paxday, Eric Kerr. Uh, the mobile tractor unit. Basically, you'll be able to, to plop it down, and it'll start to tractor in all of your wrecks. So anything that is uh, a wreck assigned to you, I'm not sure if the the wreck has been abandoned, if it will tractor in, but it'll just kind of congregate them together. Now, no word yet on the distance, the, the velocity. People are saying maybe this will totally kill the Noctis. My guess is that it won't be as good as the Noctis. It won't have as much range. It won't tractor them in as quickly. And you probably won't have any um, ability to like control the loot at all. So ninja salvagers or ninja looters will probably love these things if they're undefended. Um, because they can just pop into your mission room or wherever you are and, you know, all the wrecks are right there for them. So uh, my guess is they're going to try to balance it somewhere between, uh, an, somewhere less than a Noctis. So the Noctis still has a role if you want a multi-box or if you want to use that ship. But for most of us that don't like to multi-box mission, uh, it's going to be a great addition really help you take advantage of your rooms. Okay, so um, some in Paxty Erker once again says that uh, they might probably the subsystems probably not. Um, oh, and he says the structures are alive. I, I couldn't find them. Ah, six tech C. Okay, that's that's probably why I haven't visited six tech C on Sing Sissy yet. So, all right. So, uh, thank you very much for that. Those um, uh, your, your comments there. Let me. Oh, wrong window. Okay. So, so here we are. Once you've logged in, once you've uh, installed the client and it's updated and you've logged in, this is what you're going to be greeted with, the new character selection screen. Um, my guess is it's this particular part right up here is going to change based on um, the expansion, also like what it's kind of showing. So it's kind of a, a throwback to the old themed um, character selection windows there. Um, this right up here kind of indicates, will indicate to you how much training time, so your subscription for your character, and I, I believe they, you know, they correspond to the slots here. Uh, it, your portrait now in Sissy, if, if it's coming from Tranquility, it won't show your portrait, but it'll show you your current skill and training and where it is, um, your skill points, how much money you have, any mails, and we'll give you a little silhouette of the ship you're currently in, as well as showing you the system you're in. So overall, nice improvement. So let's go ahead and select my main. Ah, the frigate, the mighty SOE frigate, and the stupid tutorial. No, delete you tutorial. So here we are, um, in Singularity. You'll notice that, um, oh, there you are, in local. Greetings. So we're in Singularity. Let me kind of show you the, the big reason you probably want to get into Singularity. So um, just notice, once again, there, there are people that post their own um, market orders, but 
you know, all of these seated ones here, uh, 100 disc. So you can fit out ships cheaply. You can afford to lose them. Uh, this is a big reason to get on to Singularity. So um, let's take a quick look. So that this is the, the frigate. And um, I will post a link. In fact, let me do that right now. Let me show you the link where um, you can kind of go and look at and read in more depth about many of these changes. Uh, lecture. So this is Eve University's forum for dev blogs and patch notes. So as um, if, if you're like me and you don't have a lot of time to monitor that stuff, this is a great place to go where um, people will gather them, post them, you can comment on them, see updates, things of that nature. So you'll notice right away that the, the frigate has two high slots, four mid slots, and four low slots. They are, this is a drone boat and uh, an armor tanking based on its uh, description here. Now this is going to bring up some other changes that I actually really like. Um, you'll, you'll notice here some extra icons and some changes. But the description, um, it'll use two particular, um, it'll draw from two trait lines, just like most pirate and uh, faction ships. The MR frigate skill adds 4% bonuses to armor resistances. And the Galente frigate, which um, adds 20% bonus to drone hit points. So it is a drone ship and an armor tank ship at that. Now as a roll bonus, 100% um, reduction in the CPU requirements for cloaking devices. So you notice here that I have a covert ops cloaking device and um, I have all of my uh, CPU available to me. 37.5% increased strength for scan probes. Now this is pretty big. This is just the static roll bonus similar to the one that the Gnosis has or the Genosis. And um, it basically represents um, um, what you're like if you were going to fly a Tech 1 uh, Explorer frigate, what if you had uh, a maxed out frigate level. So, uh, you know what? I just realized something. I don't think... The I was under the impression, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the channels were connected between Tranquility and Sissy. But that appears... Excuse me, to not be the case. Um, if you'll give me one second to play around with things. <laughs> ah, yeah, so I'm, I'm apologize. I was monitoring a channel that's not even connected to tranquility. So I'm going to have to adjust really quick over here on my second monitor and change change something really quick okay this should allow me to keep track of so faction mods um, in some places I've seen them um, but most of the time, no. Uh, you can probably buy them from loyalty point stores. Uh, but it doesn't look like the loyalty points or the ISK cost are, have changed. So, but it, for example, I was looking for the Sisters Expanded Probe Launcher, and there's none available here in EZA. So uh, that can kind of be a problem, but I do recall during one test finding them somewhere. I just don't know where. Um, so yeah, back to the ship. So 37.5% represents a 7.5% per level, which is what the Tech 1 frigate, Explorer frigates have. And uh, so it's just a static bonus to the scan probe strength. Now the Tech 2 uh, covert ops frigates have a also a per level reduction they have a higher per level increase to the strength of scan probes, and they also have a um, 
per level increase to the flight, like the, the strength, the flight speed of your scan probe. So they're really trying to preserve the covert ops role as a sort of cloaky uh, scanner um, and, and create their, its own flavor. Now, these ships, this both this one and the Stratios, or Stratos, or yeah, not up on that Greek. Um, are designed to really be like uh, to be able to operate in hostile environments and um, stay hidden, but still have combat ability. The nice thing is because they're both armor tanks, you've got a nice l amount of mods here for your armor. They do have a very significant drone capacity. For the cruiser, you can still fit, you know, weapons. You've got four turret slots and five total high slots. And that saves your mids for exploration, or they could be something else. But it's really nice, uh, well thought out implementation to this particular ship. Now, my favorite, uh, my fa favorite feature on these new ships here is the dance hall right here, little nightclub. After a long day of exploration cloak up somewhere safe, bust out them exotic dancers, and you just have a party. I mean, and you can even switch sides here. I mean, right over here, you want to see out the left side? You want to party out the right side? Either way. My favorite feature. Um, now, the cruiser, not as obvious, and they even made the mistake of slanting the floor. I mean, how are you supposed to dance on the slanted floor? Anyway. Uh, they describe these as the drone bays, but we really know what's going to be happening in this flashing, dark, flashing light room. Exotic dancers. I mean, it's the, the, only, the only option there. Um, so, really awesome. These, no one's really sure what the price is. There's a lot of speculation, but it'll probably be comparable to the costs of other faction, or pirate faction frigates and cruisers. Probably a little bit more expensive in the first couple of weeks to a month um, but we'll see how it pans out uh, they will be expensive so you definitely won't want to lose them but they're going to add a lot of, of really cool utility and they'll definitely have a role to play in the game um, now with that said let's take a quick look at one of some of the other things you can expect to see here um, and then we'll hit one of the some of the bigger the big one I kind of consider a big game changer in in Eve. So a really cool thing you'll see over here is uh, some additional icons. Um, the compare tool you'll have to get access and pull it over here because it's not on, but uh, basically just allows you to bring up the compare window, which you know you can pull in. You know, if you want to take a look at your ships, you can just drag your ships in. So these are all the explorer-based ships, plus the auger, and let me get rid of that one. So I can remove that one and remove that one. So you can have up to 40 um, things to compare, and you can select up to 10 particular attributes right here. Uh, it, so a great way... Um, and and this will especially be cool in conjunction with this new little feature. So let me close out of his here. So this is what they call ISIS. It's their new um, sort of redesign of like, kind of like a helping tool. So if, as you see up here, you have a ship tree based on race. So you can click for all the different races plus um, the warships, the pirate faction ships, and the Sisters of Eve. And uh, so let's go back to the mighty Amar. I'm not, my character isn't Amar, but I think Amar ships are awesome. I'm Galente. It's kind of a strange combination. So you s it'll start you out here with your rookie ship, show you the shuttles. In this bottom line here is kind of your industrial tree. So um, your bestower, your sigil, um, also your tech two variants, jump freighters. Now, so if you have access to it, if you can fly it, it will kind of be highlighted, so it'll be brighter. If you can't fly it, it'll be duller. You can hover your mouse over it. It'll bring up this little um, box here. You can click on it to get a nice little view of what it looks like. 
you can also hover your mouse over these little icons, and these little icons are little clues as to the uh, usefulness of the ship. So small ship, this one says it's uh, hulls with good damage and defense, uh, energy turrets, and armor. So if you're a new player or if you're a player that hasn't memorized every ship and all of its abilities, this is a great way to come in and take a quick look at um, what a ship is, what it does, what it's going to need. So um, you also notice right here, there's this little two in parentheses. So if you click right on this button right here, it'll bring up the information. Um, so it, it allows you to go right in, check and see what the bonuses are. And this right here, this little thing in green tells you that you have met all the requirements necessary to fly the ship. And this one right here is a part of the new redesigned certificate system. So if we come in to the character screen here, you have to notice the certificates uh, are no longer here. They've been combined into the skills screen. And m I, I think they're still working on the implementation of this because there's no way to see. Like, it'll tell you what you have at, at what level. Um, and you can filter based on, oh, I only want to see what I have versus seeing everything. But there's no way for me to check and see, like, what this is composed of in this. You know, if I click on the show information, uh, it shows you, oh, they've changed this. So this is a change from yesterday. Yesterday they only had description up. But uh, this will show you the levels. Um, it pretty much follows that level 5 is level 5 in the, the skills here. 4 is 4. Um, they've really tried to take these certificate systems and make them more useful, um, more informational. And they've tied this in <coughs> to both the groupings for the skill tree. So you'll notice that... Uh, let me close this down. Close that down. So you'll notice that they're basically the same here the same groupings and their certificates. Um, what do I have? Are less because they've combined a lot of these, uh, the various skills into groupings based on. So you, you'll also notice that there's some changes to icons, some changes to buttons. Um, the, the UI has changed a little. But really where it's cool as you come in and <coughs> you can see the, the like your mastery and it'll kind of show you which certificates um, are really going to impact this ship and you can click on them it'll show you uh, at what level and then this is a representation of the level at which you have all the certificates so you'll notice here for three I'm missing uh, Amar target management and Amar tank uh, armor tanking I can come in oh I don't have any armor layering yet and I don't have my radar compensation so much more useful than the current system and uh, really tied in. Now, if you're just looking at this information page anywhere else, you can always click Show in ISIS, and it'll bring it right up. You can take a look here. Um, if you hover over this little icon, it also gives you kind of the same information you see here, plus a small little description about um, small, fast, but fragile vessels suited to a variety of purposes, especially tackling. And then the group bonus skills, it indicates right here. So when you get up to things like, let's see, the new attack, uh, electronic attack frigates. So <coughs> I have a Mar Frigate 5, but I only have electronic attack ships to 1. And that indicates here, and you can see it. So another cool thing um, that I thought, anyway, <coughs> was say you're interested in finding about about the electronic attack ships. Um, you can come and look at them individually like this, or you can bring up the information on any one and say go to requirements. Now in the requirements I can bring up uh, the electronic attack ships and say show info. And so here's really cool, in, in the required for at level one I get access to these ships. And here's another little tool, this tool tip is pretty cool. I can read right here, just hover my mouse over and it will show me the traits. So the hyena um, really cool. Check out that electronic attack ship skill bonus per level. 50% bonus to stasis webifier range? That's awesome! It means at level 5? What does that mean at level 5? I don't even know. I'm not good at math. But that's cool. I mean, that's... And then the carries I'm also excited about. 
20% bonus to Warp Disruptor and Warp Scrambler range? I mean, in a frigate? Some people are saying you'll be able to tackle out to 50 kilometers in this thing. That's pretty, um, probably a Warp Disruptor, but that's awesome. I mean, small gangs are going to love these ships. Now, there's some problems with them, obviously. They're, they have some awesome functionality now, but... Oh, that's the skill. Let me go in and take a look at the ship. So the ship itself, um, one other thing to kind of notice here is that they've, um, where are we looking at? So the mass, the, right here, the mass, the inertia modifiers, they're pretty high. They're more in line with destroyers. And the other one that was kind of significant, scan resolution, no, not signature radius. That's kind of high for a, a frigate. Um, you're, we look over here at the destroyer. Let's see this destroyer. We could use the compare tool. Yeah, let's do it. Let's try it. Oh, yeah, I won't do it that way. That's kind of dumb. This is my feedback. Let me do this. Let me compare. No. Curse you have to bring up the market. It's still windows and, sp uh, and spreadsheets in space. Oh, those carries. That would just be too much, I think. That would just like be too much functionality for CCP. A lot of cool things, but ah, it just misses it. All right, here we go. So where are we? Signature radius. So, uh, oh yeah, we should probably pull in. Maybe th that looks a little different to me. I recall it being different. Oh, nope, don't want that. Let's sh view market details. And we'll do it this way. So, larger than a frigate, not quite the size of a destroyer. Um, so there's some downsides there. You're going to move a little bit slower, you're going to turn a little bit slower than a normal frigate. You're going to have a little bit larger signal radius, and that's before you add anything like shield mods and armor mods and things like that. So good piloting for these ships is still going to be necessary. But once again, I really like this. Um, I don't pretend to know everything about EVE or their ships. This gives me a really quick way of kind of seeing where they fit, their role, their functionality with in combination with the compare tool, if they'll ever let me drag and drop from the information window or or from here, that would be amazing. But um, there's some really cool, interesting things there. Now, before we kind of end, oh, that's not what I want to do. Before, oh, there are some ships that don't show up. So, for example, right now the Gnosis uh, does not show up in this particular. Um, as well as some others like special or limited edition ships, you're not going to find them in here, at least not yet. And I don't know if that's intentional or unintentional. Let's see, cruiser stats. Um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I didn't catch that. Let's come into the Sisters of Eve, bring up the cruisers. So once again, armor. Oh yeah, want to admire it. Dance hall. Let's get a close up on the dance hall. Uh, armor bonus resistances, uh, drone damage and hit points. That's cool. The other was just uh, drone hit points, I believe. Uh, roll bonus 50% bonus to medium energy turret optimal range. Same st in strength for scan probes. Oh, and this one I forgot to mention 10% uh, virus strength for relic and data analyzers. That's cool. Uh, that's uh, the bonus you find on the Tech 2 uh, Exploration Covops frigates. Really, um, at some point I hope they kind of change the, the, the difference between a virus strength of 30 to 40, but this, if you have Tech 2 analyzers, will put you up to a virus strength of 40. And if you could just bump that up another five points, um, it, it would actually make it really valuable. I just find that the difference in, in how much it costs your, your coherence between 30 and and uh, 40 is not a lot because there's certain of those defensive substructures that have 45, so you can't one-shot them. So you're going to take the same amount of damage whether you have a 40 virus strength or a 30 virus strength because it still takes two hits. Now there's, there's one, maybe two other substructures that um, a 40 allows you to one-shot that a 30 or 35 does not. 
but for the most part they're the same. And you can read a little bit more about that. And if you're an explorer, you've probably already seen that. Um, so yeah, long description here talking about it. The attributes. So drone capacity, 400 um, meters cubed, but it only has 100 megabit per second. Now this is a recent change. You used to be able to to feel the full flight of sentries or heavies, but they just thought that was too overpowered, so they've dropped it down. It just If you're a drone pilot, that kind of hurts. Like Not being able to feel the full flight of anything is just kind of a slap in the face. Uh, when you're so close, or you've got a mixed drones or something. Um, but it, anyway, it, it was going to be an awesome ship, I, you know, so I'm glad they're, they're listening to the feedback. Um, targeting range, 55 kilometers, seven lock targets, scan resolution. So you know, I'm not an expert on these. We could do some comparison if we had more time, but it'll uh, warp in line with the uh, other cruisers or at least the Tech 1 cruisers. And fitting requirements, 5 low, 5 medium, 5 high, 4 turrets, 3 upgrade hard points, rig size medium, and uh, fairly decent CPU power grid and calibration. Or calibration is a little low. I guess that's normal for faction. The requirements, you need uh, level 2 in Galante cruiser and Mar cruiser. And I th believe this holds over to the frigates. I think it's 3. You need frigate level 3 and then, of course, your little mastery here. Um, one, yeah. I'm not going to fly this ship anytime soon. So, one of the changes that I'm really excited about is... Uh, here we go. I need to go and change that. Is um, warp speed. So, uh, we're already a little bit over my time, so this is probably going to be the last feature I actively discuss on the live stream before ending it. Um, there's a lot of great, knowledgeable people in the lecture.eunity chat channel, so feel free to, to drop your questions there. Um, I have to start, I need to go work out, get ready for work after this, but I really want to cover this because it's, it's pretty awesome. So, what's changed? Well, in EVE currently, every ship ha has a different max warp speed, but the speed getting into and out of that max warp speed is the same. So everybody accelerates into warp the same at the same rate. And and there's some charts there if you follow. Let me f let me get that linky for you guys again. Oh. If you go in fact, let me take it right in take you right into uh where are we here? Warp speed and acceleration. So this particular link will take you to the EVE University dev blog's post on warp speed and acceleration with fancy charts, spreadsheets in space, in your browser in space. Um, but it'll kind of out lay out the difference. But basically what it means is that every ship, no matter how fast that ship can warp currently, it pretty much takes, the, uh, unless you get into the capitals and the freighters and the titans, they... they they're pretty similar in terms of how much time it takes to get into and out of warp. And so it doesn't matter how fast you warp, except in really long warps. Avast virus oh. database has been updated. Thank you, Avast. Thank you for ruining that moment. Um, so, uh, let me finish that thought. If you're in a ship, um, you're going to, even if you have, like, so... Pax D over here. Where did he go? Oh, he docked up. He was in a cheetah. Uh, currently, uh, interceptor NTs and Covops. Most NTs and Covops, the the fleet versions, can warp at 13.5 um, astronomical units a second. But it doesn't really matter because it takes the same amount of time for them to get into warp as it does for me. So that's not very far away. Let's find something that's a little far away. So let's go to this. This gate right here. So let's warp to it. In my uh, ship with no mods. Fail ship or fail pilot. Now, if you're in a Tech 1 cruiser after the patch, it's going to take about the same am amount of time to warp, get into warp, and get out of warp. You're really not going to see a lot of differences in terms of your, the time it takes to warp if you're in a Tech 1 cruiser. So, But you, you just saw, if you were watching closely, you just saw 
Paxter just fly by me. I mean, and he even got into warp. Is that th is that the name? I'm, I don't have my local up, so I can't even see. Oh, and he's gone. He's out of the system already. But so this is about what it what warp speed is like currently. Um, just to give you a frame of reference, it takes a little while to come out of warp. I'm s decelerating. Pretty typical. Oh, come on. The name, please. And I'm going to get destroyed by these rats. I know it. Okay, here we go. So we're going to warp back and dock just for reference. Oh, yeah, taking hits. Boom, baby. Now, after Rubicon, every ship is going to get a tweak to its maximum warp speed, but it's also going to pick up an attribute called a warp speed multiplier, um, or a change or a tweak to its warp speed multiplier. And this will affect how fast you get into and out of your maximum warp speed. The higher your maximum warp speed, the higher your warp speed multiplier. Now, the Fulcrum is the Tech 1 Cruiser. So if you're in a Tech 1 Cruiser, you should feel about the same in terms of warp. If you're in a uh, anything higher, it's going to feel a little bit longer. If you're anything lower, it's going to be faster. Okay. Now, overall, everything is getting an in a buff to its total warp time speed. And you really won't see a lot of those changes on the bigger ships until you start okay. warping really long distances. And you can kind of see, if you like numbers, uh, go to that post. You'll see the, the spreadsheets there. But let's switch to an interceptor. Which interceptor should it be? Cheetah! And let's unpack that sucker. Where? Right. Oh, I already have one. Duh. All right. So, uh, Kovops, Interceptors, they are going to maintain uh, the fastest warping at times, Interdictors, and BR, whatever that is. Um, they're going to get a pretty big buff. Assault frigates, bombers, electronic attack frigates as well. Um, they're going to get a slight increase. So, remember, you know, kind of remember how long it took to warp to this particular gate. We're going to do it again. Now, let me do it from standstill because alignment time doesn't change. This doesn't change alignment time at all. Let me align. All right, so I'm up to speed. I can warp. Here we go. Warp two. Warp drive Boom! Into warp. Do you see how fast that was? It was amazing. So here I am. A few seconds later. Um, see down here. I'm almost out of warp. Bam! Out of warp. Targeting. Yeah. Get that tackle. Except I can't. I don't have any mods. But, but you see how amazing that? Oh, and I'm gonna die. I'm really gonna die. Here we go. Let's dock. Turning around, into warp. Boom. So this is, I mean, for in interceptor pilots, small gangs, this is going to change things because uh, you're going to be able to get to places so fast, get out of warp so fast, and um, this is not only going to affect PvP, because um, now, you know, FCs are going to have to worry about, well, we have small ships that warp faster than large ships, and, you know, and, and our tacklers are going to be able to get on grid and tackle so much faster than our larger D DD ships are going to be able to, to get on and apply damage. So that's going to change up PvP a little bit, especially in null and wormholes. But the other thing, so right now, D-Scan, and this is kind of like an, uh, something people haven't really talked about, but D-Scan is getting a nerf. Because think about it. The difference between warping an interceptor or a Kovops from outside D-Scan range to land on grid to target you is approximately the same time it takes to be one astronomical unit away from somebody and get into warp and get out of warp. Like, 
I tested it for a class, and the difference between warping from off descan range to landing on grid to targeting was like 17 seconds. The difference from being, uh, and it, but if you were one astronomical unit away, from one AU away, and you did the same thing, it was like 15 seconds, because all that time was eaten up in getting into and out of warp. Now, an, a ship like the Interceptor or the Covops, or even the Interdectors, are going to be able to come from off descan range, land on grid, and target you way, way faster than before. So D-Scan D is getting a nerf, and that changes things for gankers, for miners, for mission runners, for situational awareness, uh, fast ships like uh, assault frigates, frigates, interceptors, interdictors. They are going to be kind of game changers in that sense, that D-Scan, it's going to be a lot harder. You're going to have to be clicking a lot more. And let's be honest, I mean, it's tough enough to, to monitor D-Scan once every 10 seconds while trying to do something else. But I'm really excited about these changes, notwithstanding the fact that it's really going to change things. I think uh, the warp speed acceleration problem has been um, a long time in coming, and it's going to really add to the, the gameplay. So um, that's kind of an overview. I've, I hit some of the major ones. I, I wish I could uh, demonstrate some of the structures for you, but I uh, apologize um, for not tracking them down in the uh, Sissy universe, but hopefully now you can uh, create your own client, get in, uh, play around with things, see what's going to be changing in the upcoming, uh, see the new models, whatever you want to do. Don't forget that at 1700 EVE time, there is going to be a mass test on Singularity, so if you're going to be playing in around then, that might be worth your time. Blockade Runners, thank you. I just could not for the life of me think of what BR stood for. So, Blockade Runners, that kind of, that's cool. And that's changing. Let me bring this over here. Boop. And zoom in. So this is the chart here. So this is the old chart. This is the distance you'd be in warp. This is like showing you the actual like um, kilometers. This right here is the wor old warp speed multiplier, and this is the uh, maximum warp speed and then these are the times so for uh, an NT Covops to warp 150 took, took the same as a freighter so uh, provided that the freighter was aligned and up to speed it could warp 150 kilometers the same as uh, in the same time as a Covops or an NT could um, you notice that starts to spread out here so um, 100 uh, 1 million kilometers 1 AU all the same starting to see some difference at two astronomical units a little bit more. By the time you get down to like a 200 AU jump, a yeah, big difference. But but look at how, I mean, those, it's the same right here. So here's the, s the chart for the current design. So they've split it out into a whole lot more categories here. And you'll notice that they've kind of buffed the warp speed on the low end here and reduced it here. But overall, everybody's going to be warping faster. So an NT Covops will be able to do a 150 kilometer jump in four seconds. That's pretty pretty awesome, you know, doing station games or gate camping and stuff. And then overall, for that same 200 AU jump, the Jump Freighter or Titan is has a reduction, but so too does the NT Covops, 30 seconds. So once again, the T Tech One Cruiser is intended to be the fulcrum. You shouldn't see many changes here. Uh, you'll notice the numbers are pretty much, if not exactly the same. But anything to this side will be faster. Anything to this side will be slower. Um, so anyway, my name is Eric Altair. This has been a class on the Singularity and some of the changes in, uh, upcoming in Rubicon. Uh, just keep in mind that changes on s Singularity are not final, and things could change, uh, especially the specifics the overall features that are going to be introduced should be the same. Um, hopefully somebody will be able to hang around in lecture.uni and answer any questions you may have, but uh, I'm going to log off now just as kind of a final... Whoa. That could have been bad. Where? Oh, yeah. So this is the... Let me back out here. I'll post this. This is the uh, form for announcing this class. If you have any feedback, especially that can help me improve as a teacher, please feel free to post it up here. Um, what I typically do 
So I have a kind of a prize in mind for the feedback that I think helps me the most as a teacher. Sometimes it's ISK, sometimes it's you know a module or a ship or something like that. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you do have some constructive feedback for me and you post it here and uh, it's something that I think helps me the most, then um, you're going to get a prize and that'll be contracted to you um, probably somewhere in and around Aldrat and I'll let you know in game. Thank you very much and uh, fly safe or dangerous depending on your preference and um, we'll see you and talk to you later.